hello guys and welcome to my channel in this video i'm gonna show you how you can create morph targets or uh, standalone morph targets from uh, fbx and obj files at runtime using mesh morpher right so first of all we will go with the uh, obj approach and uh, for that we need the obj files and uh, we can export those from uh, from uh, mesh morpher and uh, we will create uh First one, it's the base. This is the base unmodified uh, OBJ file. And we will do it again, but we will name it morphed, right? We want this to be the morphed one. Now we can go ahead and open, uh, uh, in my case, ZBrush, but you can use Blender or whatever. And here we have to import our morphed uh, OBJ file, right? We want to create the morph target. This is the morph uh, file. We want to create it in ZBrush uh, in our case. And you can sculpt here. Wait one second. You can do whatever you want here. Just use whatever tool you want. Uh, but make sure the, that the tool uh, you use doesn't uh, change the vertex count or uh, the order of the, uh, this mesh, right? Now we can go ahead and export it and we will override it. And uh, now we can go back to uh, Mesh Mapper, right? To see what uh, your import settings uh, for uh, runtime, you can go ahead and check in create from Mesh files and just select your, uh, your files, right? As you can see with the default settings with the base front axis uh, as Y and base up axis as Z, I don't have to do any settings. Mesh Morpher and Unreal Engine export uh, OBJ files uh, with uh, X forward and uh, Y up. Keep that in mind, right? So you'll know uh, what you uh, uh, what settings to use. But in our case, since uh, we don't uh, we don't uh, uh, change the we didn't change the orientation of the mesh we we're using the defaults right so we have the base uh, obj file and the morphed obj file and now we can go ahead and uh, jump into the uh, blueprint and do it at runtime here uh, we have to go to create morph target from a uh, mesh file or create standalone uh, morph target from mesh file. Uh, whatever uh, you want, uh, pick uh, pick the right choice, right? First, we will go with the create from standalone, uh, create standalone morph target from mesh files. And we will set the outer at serve. Uh, this outer is used uh, as the parent of uh, the resulted standalone morph target, right? Each uh, variable has a tooltip, so you'll know what uh, what each uh, does and how uh, it influences uh, the result, right? So I'm gonna uh, put the outer here, and now I can uh, drag uh, a new pin and make a new mesh morpher FBX input, right? So I'm gonna pick here uh, split strict uh, struct uh, a pin. And I'm gonna jump into Explorer and uh, see what name I, I was using, right? And uh, which path as well. So I have uh, Skeletal Mesh Many Base OBJ. I'm gonna grab this name. You can use whatever path you want. I'm just gonna hard code them now because it's easier. Okay. And uh, we leave the defaults with front axis Y and Z up. We don't make any changes here. And just uh, duplicate this and connect it to morphed file, right? Pick, uh, pick the new uh, name for the morph file because we use the different name here. Just use rename, it's easier. Pick the entire name and just paste it here. see okay and uh, now you can pick a new morph target name we will go with the horns it's fine 
and uh, the target skeletal mesh we want to apply these deltas well what this uh this node does grabs the deltas from, from these files and uh, projects them to this mesh right so let's see get skeletal mesh okay and plug it in uh, max LOD, you want to set it uh, to uh, uh, you you can pick how many LODs in the target skeletal mesh you want to project this uh, morph target to right if you leave minus one it will go uh, to all of the LODs if you pick zero it will only apply to LOD zero and so on right we will go with minus one and uh, I think this is it you can uh, promote this to a variable you need to hold it in a variable otherwise the garbage collector will destroy it and now you can enable set weight and uh, go with the value of uh, one to see the entire uh, morph target right so if uh, we press three gonna take a little bit as you can see we have uh, the horns on our skeletal mesh which uh, is uh, created uh, which are created from the deltas wrapped from two obj files and projected on this mesh right so now we can close this and uh, see how we can do it for uh, uh, morph targets right we want to create uh, normal morph targets not standalone uh, for that we, we have to go to uh, project settings and uh, search uh, for morph target and to be able to create morph targets at uh, runtime you need to disable this option and restart uh, restart the engine right I'm gonna restart the engine and I'm gonna see you in one second okay the engine is back up and uh, we can uh, uh, try now uh, the morph target uh, approach for uh, uh, creating from mesh files right so we will uh, keep this uh, these inputs here because we will use them in the other node but we will create a new shortcut key. input key four so when we press four we we create the morph target right so we will go with the uh, create from mesh files and pick create morph target from mesh file node right this is the node uh, we want to use you'll see that uh, there is no more outer option because uh, the morph target uh, gets created on the skeletal mesh directly so uh, the parent will be this uh, skeletal mesh and i'm just copying the above uh, the above uh, nodes so i'll just plug them in right so i'm gonna plug everything back in and i'm gonna create the same name horns doesn't matter you can pick whatever you want and you you can even uh, create a branch node here branch and uh, if it is uh, successful uh, you can go ahead with uh, set mode target set mark target this is the node and we will use this name horns and set the value of one right so let's compile it and uh, let's see the result we need to press four just be patient and this is it now we have a standard uh, morph target created at runtime on our skeletal mesh from two uh, obj files right obviously we can go ahead and uh, create from fbx files at runtime as well let's uh, try that as well uh, we will uh, pick our skeletal mesh in the content browser and uh, right click on it go to asset action and uh, export right so we will export this as a fbx file 
Uh, I'm uh, modifying it in uh, ZBrush, so I'm gonna try to to keep it uh, as uh, less information as possible. So I will not export morph targets. I will not uh, export collision. I don't need the level of detail. I just need uh, a basic mesh, so I I, I can uh, sculpt it uh, to create a new uh, shape, right? So I'm gonna export it. And now we can go back in uh, our uh, ZBrush application, import, and select the FBX file, right? I'm just going with OK. I'm not, uh, if it, you get this message, just uh, press cancel and that's it, right? So now that we have our uh, our FBX imported, we can uh, we can edit it and let's create uh, shoulders for this example, right? It's fine. We just want uh, to test this. Okay, and now we can go ahead and uh, export it, and we're gonna export it again as a FBX file. We will uh, pick a new name. We will go with Morph. And save it. Here it's up to you. You can, uh, however, use any axis system you want. Uh, if uh, you go with Z up, Y up, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna just use Z up uh, for the sake of it and press OK. Now, if uh, we go back in uh, Unreal Engine, let's open uh, Mesh Morpher and see uh, what uh, settings uh, your uh, your new FBX files uh, will use, right? So I'm going to create from Mesh Files and I'm going to pick the newly created uh, Morph FBX, right? This is the one we create. As you can see, uh, it's not very well positioned, but we can fix that. Uh, we have to rotate, in our case, on uh, uh, x-axis, right? We will go by 90, oh, minus 9, right? So now we have uh, the morph, the uh, FBX files, uh, file uh, facing the same direction as our mesh, right? So uh, for our import at runtime, we have to remember we need to use minus 90 on the on x axis on uh, rotation, right? So if uh, we open the the, uh, the one exported uh, by Unreal Engine, we will see that we set here zero. We don't have to uh, apply anything in anything to this uh, FBX file, right? I hope it makes sense, right? So I'm going back to Unreal Engine here in uh, the blueprint and uh, we will just test it first with, uh, let me make this easier to navigate. So I'm just going to pick uh, the base file, which is SKM Mani FBX. This is the file. We don't have any, any particular changes to do here. And uh, now I'm going to pick the Morph FBX file. Okay. But here we have to apply that uh, transformation uh, uh, on our rotation on X axis, axis, right? So we are going to split this. Let me move it a little bit and just put here minus 90. That's the settings we identified, right? And uh, let's test it. Let's see how it works. We press three. The FBX files, uh, file importer is kind of heavy. It takes a little bit more than uh, the OBJ files. Just uh, keep that in mind. And, uh, and uh, this is our result. Uh, we successfully imported this uh, from uh, FBX files, right? 
so i think this is it for this video uh one more thing so one second you can also uh, export from uh, Arial Engine Runtime using Mesh Morpher to OBJ files. Export Skeletal Mesh to OBJ file. This is uh, a new feature. It's something cool. Uh, the export uh, will uh, will uh, reflect any baked standalone morph target. So if uh, you use the set weight uh, on a mesh and then you export it. Uh, the export will uh, will have those uh, changes baked into it, right? So I think uh, this is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find this uh, useful. What I think it's very useful for is uh, to have some modding in runtime games where you just send the, the morphed OBJ files to create the shapes of your characters and stuff like that without uh, uh, holding them initially in the game, right? You just transfer them. I hope uh, this uh, will help you with your projects and uh, yeah, see you around guys, bye.